Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to answer competency 3 questions. Let's go ahead and listen to the question first and try to answer it. Question number one. A first grade teacher plans to spend time each day reading aloud to her class. The primary goal of this activity is to promote students' appreciation and enjoyment of reading. In selecting books for this purpose, it is most important for the teacher to ensure that the books she chooses a reflect situations likely to be equally familiar to all students, b have clear connections to the content that students will be learning, c feature controlled vocabulary with which all first graders should be familiar, d are engaging and of interest to the students. This question is mainly about the most important stuff in selecting books to promote students' appreciation and engagement. When you look at the answer choices, we can say we are looking for an answer that gets students' attention and appeal to them. So the correct answer is D, because engaging and interest to the students. That time, the learning is happening. Let's go ahead and look at the second question. The most important reason for planning an entire unit before beginning instruction in it is to a facilitate moving from one topic to another in the unit according to the students' interests and needs. B. Allow the unit's summative assessment tool to be created before developing lesson plans. C. Ensure that the content and learning activities are sequenced in a logical and coherent manner. D. Determine whether the topic of the unit is appropriate given the age and developmental level of the students. In this question, is seeking an answer to what is the very first reason behind planning an entire unit before the instruction. As teachers, we need to make sure that all topics in the content are given in a reasonable and accurate way. So the correct answer will be C. Question number three. When planning and setting up activity centers in a classroom to accompany an instructional unit, it is most important for a teacher to adhere to which of the following guidelines. A. Each activity should be designed to support a specific objective or set of objectives related to the unit. B. The centers should be designed to be visited in a predetermined sequence rather than randomly. C. Each activity should be simple enough that students can complete it in a short amount of time. D. The centers should be introduced only after the class is about halfway through the unit. This question is looking for an answer about what is the most important guidelines for a teacher to follow when planning an activity in a classroom. Whatever we teach or whatever activity we do in class should be aligned with the curriculum and objective related to the unit. So the correct answer is going to be A, specific objective and or a set of objectives related to the unit. Question number four. A seventh grade teaching team is in the beginning stages of planning interdisciplinary units for the upcoming year. Which of the following would be the best initial step to take in this process? A. Brainstorm content units that are likely to have immediate appeal to students. B. Create a curriculum map to help identify themes and skills that overlap across content areas. C. Decide how many of such units there will be and space them evenly across the school year. D. Develop a list of topics that individual members of the team are especially interested in teaching. This question is focusing on the answer to what is the first initial step for planning interdisciplinary units. Interdisciplinary teaching is completely based on set of methods used to teach a unit across different curricular disciplines. Therefore, there should be skills and themes set and identified across the content areas. So the answer is B. Curriculum map and themes and skills overlap across content areas. Question number five, before the beginning of the school year, 
The fourth grade teacher obtains assessment results from the previous year for students who will be in his class. The teacher can most appropriately use this assessment information to A. Determine how best to group these students for various types of learning activities. B. Plan instruction that efficiently addresses this group of students' particular strengths and needs. C. Assess the need for teacher aids in the classroom. D. Select the methods of assessment on which the students perform most successfully to use in his own class. In this question, we have a scenario where a teacher looks at the previous year assessments results and we are seeking a reason behind this. The purpose of this is to plan and modify instructions completely based, based off of students' strengths and needs. So the correct answer is B. Especially strengths and needs, if you see them in the answer choices, that's gonna be the answer. That's the tip for you. Question number six. A ninth grade teacher has brainstormed a list of potential learning goals that she is considering using for an upcoming instructional unit. One of the learning goals is students will appreciate the aesthetic beauty of works of art from various cultures. What is the most significant problem associated with using this learning goal? A. It requires a level of prior content knowledge that most ninth graders do not yet process. B. It is worded so ambiguously as to make it difficult to create meaningful instructional activities. C. It addresses an outcome that is likely to be of little interest to most ninth graders. D. It is difficult to assess students' achievement of this goal in an objective, meaningful way. This question is focused on the following objective and what's wrong with it. Objectives must be first grammatically clear, second measurable by assessment, third aligned with the curriculum, fourth relevant to the standards. The following objective is not measurable by assessment, so our answer needs to be related to the measurability by assessment. So the correct answer will be D. Question number 7. Fifth grade students have just completed a social studies unit in which they explored pioneers everyday life during the westward expansion. Which of the following student activities would show the highest level of critical thinking? A. Creating a timeline of important events during westward expansion. B. Completing a multiple choice assessment about pioneers during westward expansion. C. Writing a journal entry from the perspective of a pioneer during westward expansion. D. Drawing a picture showing a pioneer during westward expansion. This question is related to the Bloom's taxonomy and we are looking for the highest level of critical thinking. We need to look at the verbs such as create, design, construct, assemble, develop, etc. Of course, we need to read the entire passage or sentence. The answer is C because it gives us a different perspective from a pioneer. Question number 8. Mr. Ramirez is a 5th grade teacher planning a unit on the environment. The students will work collaboratively to conduct internet research that will culminate in a group computer-based slideshow persuading community members to participate in helping to protect the environment. When constructing her lesson plans for the unit, Ms. Ramirez anticipates potential challenges that may arise while students are conducting their research. She decided to conduct several mini lessons before students begin their research. Mini lesson 1. How to distinguish relevant from irrelevant information. Mini lesson 2. How to refrain from plagiarism. Mini lesson 3. How to keep their research organized. Ms. Ramirez presents students with a broad topic and an internet article related to the topic. To best address the first mini lesson, which of the following activities should students complete next? A. Highlighting the first and last sentence of each paragraph in order to focus on the information pertinent to the research question. B. 
not taken based on the information that the photograph captions provide about the research question. C. Discussing the search engine parameters used to obtain the article, including keywords from the research question. D. Annotating applicable points in the article that focus on the information pertinent to the research question. In this question, we have a fifth grade teacher planning on unit about environment and their students will conduct internet research. She prepares three mini lessons before the internet research. We're looking for an answer about mini lesson one, which is how to tell the difference between relevant in two and irrelevant one. Answer, we need to look for some applicable points that are related to our internet research. So that way we can distinguish it from relevant to irrelevant. Answer is gonna be D. Annotating applicable points in the article that focus on the information pertinent to the research questions. Question number 9. Which of the following skills must Ms. Ramirez include in the introduction to the second mini lesson? A. Using a thesaurus. B. Citing sources in a bibliography. C. Determining the accuracy of the source. D. Verifying the effectiveness of quotations. This question is seeking an answer about mini lesson 2, which is how to avoid plagiarism and how the teacher should approach it in the introduction of mini lesson 2. Answer is going to be the teacher should teach her students about how to do research online that students need to show the info where they got them from. It's like they need to cite the sources in a bibliography. The answer is going to be B. Question number 10. Students in an 8th grade class are going to be working on individual research projects. The teacher, Mr. Hernandez, takes the class to the school library media center so that the students can learn about the various resources that are available. Among the resources are several technology-based resources and multiple computer stations. As part of a general introduction to the library media center, Mr. Hernandez describes and demonstrates how to use various types of resources available including books, magazines, educational journals, videotapes, music, CDs, and interactive CD rooms. Which of the following is the most important benefit of making these various media available to the students? A. Accommodating students' individual learning preferences. B. Conveying high teacher expectations for all students' learning. C. Enabling students to work quickly and efficiently. D. Promoting a sense of class collaboration and cohesiveness. In this particular question, 8th grade students are doing individual projects and their teacher shows them how different resources to get help and use. The question is focusing on the answer that is the most important benefit of all those resources. Answer should be like this. Basically, the teacher is trying to differentiate the resources for students to accommodate their needs. So the answer will be A, right here. We're done with competency three. Uh, see you next video.